Hello, my friends. This is Jane Eddie Wessel. How are you? I hope you're all doing well. Let me anoint myself and you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to come and do a number today. Do a number today for your people, Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God. Let me get myself adjusted here. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want to put on the armor of the Lord on us today. Helmet of salvation. Well, actually the order in scripture in Ephesians 6 is to start with a belt of truth. While we were on the journey, my sister and I in South America, to prayer map South America, um, the Holy Spirit said to start with the order from Scripture, and it's the belt of truth first. The belt of truth first. So, Lord, we gird our waist with the belt of truth, and we bind the spirit of deception. Scripture says, in the last days, even the elect will fall. So, Lord, we bind the spirit of deception and the darkness that covers the earth, that we are a people of your light, and that we dwell in the light of the Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. We declare and decree the victory of God and truth. The word of God says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Breastplate of righteousness is up next. And it is not our righteousness, but the righteousness of Christ. Ah, the Bible says, "Our right." I just get the Holy Ghost all over me right now when I said righteousness of Christ. Man, there it is again. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I just want, oh, listen, let friends the whole thing is about getting the holy ghost the whole thing is about getting the holy ghost being baptized in the holy ghost and having the power of god and being the temples of the holy spirit having that deep union and intimacy with the lord our faith is about that thank you lord becoming sons and daughters of god again it's all about that all about it so breastplate of righteousness we bind the spirit of pride I bind the spirit of pride. You can't come against me in the name of Jesus. I slay you right now. We choose to walk in a spirit of humility. The breastplate of righteousness is the righteousness of Christ. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy as rags. No matter what great deeds I or you may do, it's as filthy as rags. It cannot compare to the righteousness of God. So we put on the breastplate of Christ's righteousness. Thank you, Lord. The righteousness of Christ. That he was without sin and he died on the cross our cross for us in perfect obedience to the Father to rescue you and I from the lake of fire and to restore our sonship, our daughtership with the Most High God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. We are children of the Most High God. So we put on the breastplate of righteousness. Then we shot our feet with the gospel of peace. And the peace is Jesus. Jesus says, I am your peace. The gospel of peace is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he came to rescue the lost and restore us to the Father. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, that we are restored in Jesus. We wear his peace on our feet that we are not fearful, we're not panicked. We're not, um, um, what is that other word? Uh, anxious. All of it. Gone. Gone in the name of Jesus. Because we're wearing Jesus for our feet. And we walk in the peace of Jesus Christ. Remember when the wind and the waves, Jesus was in the boat and the wind and the waves were crashing and the disciples were all stressed out. And Jesus got up and said to the wind and the waves, peace be still. That's the peace that you and I walk in. We walk in that peace. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your peace. The next up is the shield of faith. Excuse me, the sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is that? It's Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. 
Shield of faith. Thank you, Jesus. We believe in you. That's the next stop. God says to Abraham, I am your shield. I'm your great reward. Edia, I want you guys to put this armor on every single day. Um, Edia, I'm your shield, your great reward. I and it is the blood of Jesus that we plead over us. We are a shield. You know, like King David says, like the um, thou, O Lord, are a shield about me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. And and it says in Psalms, like the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds his people, and we are surrounded by the shield of faith. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. His shield. He, God is our shield. God is our shield. God is our shield. Edia, I just want to say that again. God is our shield. I want, let that soak into you. God is your shield. God is your shield. God is your shield. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment you shall condemn, because God is your shield. Thank you, Father. So many times we can feel disqualified because we've stepped out of our faith, we've backslid in or whatever it is, and we feel like, oh, I'm, I don't deserve that shield. But God says, no, no, no. When the blood of my son forgives you, I am your shield. When you reach out to me, you will be saved. Those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the promise of God, promise of God to you and to me. Thank you, Lord. It's not that I'm not a sinner. It's just I know how to get back up. I just know how to get back up. Every time, I, I recently I had a prophetess speak to me. She said, you know, you know how to deal with your sin with God. And it's really about confession. It's like, if I sin, I have a bad attitude or if I do something wrong. And man, I've had some doozies in my life and I've just had to go to God and I pray to him, and this is the prayer I pray. I open my heart before him. I lay on, on a, I literally lay on a, um, on a stretcher in an operating room in the spiritual realm. And I just say, Father, here I am. Take out of me whatever it is unpleasing to you. I have sinned against you. I, I, I'm like that prodigal. I always pray the prodigal prayer. If I've walked away from God, I just say, Father, I have um, sinned against you. Make me a servant in your home. And he's just like, no, 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 you're my daughter. I've been waiting for you to come back. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And he requalifies us. It's not that anyone's better than anyone else. It's that if you are willing, if I am willing, and I surrender my will and say, have your way, Daddy. He equips me with what I need to fight the battle. Hi, Sonia. God bless you. There's just some deep things stirring in my spirit. So that's why I'm putting on the armor on us. So we are robed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we put on the mantle of Christ Jesus, just remember where Jesus is. When he resurrected, he is sitting at the right hand of the Son of the Father. So when we put on the mantle of Christ, we are in him seated at the right hand of the throne of the Father, and he is in us. And so we are at the right hand of the throne of the Father, and Jesus is having his way in and through us, and we are robed in him. We are, have laid down our lives, pick up our cross, and follow him, and we are walking in spiritual authority and power in Christ Jesus, and we are temples of the Holy Spirit. We've been sanctified with the blood. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and as a result, it is God's will that's being established in you and me, and he reveals his will to his prophets, to his saints, and we go out and establish his heal, will here on earth as we are surrendered and submitted to him. And you know, recently I was talking to a young person who was saying to me, you know, about divorce. And this young person was saying, you know, I don't believe in marriage because I see how many divorces are taking place in the nation. And, you know, it's just like the, while I was on this trip, the Lord was sharing with me about the divorces in the book of Ezra and how these men had married pagan wives and they had to put away their pagan wives because it was displeasing to the Lord. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying do that because in the New Testament, it says that if you have a non-believing spouse, then don't leave them because you can, your marriage 
can be a testimony and who you are can bring them into the saving grace of God. But it also says, don't be unequally yoked. So there's a lot of confusion in the world and we are not always choosing the will of the father in our lives. I just think of all of the areas in my life where there's been struggle and damage, man, I'm telling you every one of those areas, there has been disobedience where I did not seek out the will of the Father or I was confused or something and I, st I, I stepped outside of the will of the Father and as a result there was um, negative things that happened to me. Or it could be something that God created that is so perfect. Like think about the Garden of Eden. God created the perfect home for um, for Adam and Eve and he created these two perfect people who were made in the image of God. And they and Satan was in the garden and they still sinned. So just because God created a perfect situation doesn't mean it'll stay perfect because we could step outside of the perfect will of the Father. And then we turn around and we blame God. We blame I how many times have I blamed God for my failure? Or say, God, why did you do this to me? He's like, No, I didn't do it to you. You did it to yourself. You stepped out of my perfect will. And I'm not saying I'm not coming here to blame everyone. I'm saying, let's get back on the right path. Let's get back on the right path. And the only thing that it takes to get back on the right path is to repent. That's all it takes. It's like when King David had committed adultery and murder and the Jonathan, the prophet, uh, Nathan, the prophet had come to King David and confronted him. King David's response was create in me a clean heart. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. And when we come before God, and we allow him to do this open heart surgery. We allow him to slit us down and say, okay, let me examine you. And in the Bible says, let us examine our ways and see that which is unpleasing to the Lord. And we just repent, cast it out. Guess what? That 180 degree repentance means you regain everything you have lost. It's like when the prodigal son came home, the father didn't make him a servant. He restored him as a son and he threw a party and he gave him a, a cap on it, you know, a new turban, a new ring. This is my prodigal son ring that I got in my twenties from my mother. He got new shoes on his feet and they threw a party because God's grace and his mercy is so abundant. You know, I was just in the, you know, ocean, traveling on the ocean for 20 days in South America. And I have to tell you that ocean is so vast and God says he takes our sins and he casts it into the ocean. Of um, forgetfulness. Because God says he forgets our sin. He not only forgives our sin, he forgets our sin. That's why when our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, we get to enter in. I just want today to give you, equip the saints today with some spiritual power and authority, knowledge. It, you know, it's the Holy Spirit who's giving it to you. But I'm, what I'm saying is that in the years I've walked with God, and in the years I've been a spiritual warrior in the jail cells, on the streets, wherever God's put me in ministry, I want you to know there are things that God has shown me in spiritual warfare. And I want to show you some of those things because I want you to kick the devil in the butt. Um, and God's given me the opportunity to do that for others before. And I, you know, a lot of times um, the Lord, people will ask me for prayer for their family members or someone they care about or someone that they know. And you know what I have found is like when I have gone through dark times, that is when God has elevated me. That is when I have had to get closer into the presence of the Lord and be equipped for greater spiritual warfare is when I have gone through dark times. When struggle comes, when I see people struggling around me, that is my opportunity to pray and war. And as a result, I get elevated because it's like <clears throat> one of the things that the Lord keeps saying to me is eagle, eagle, eagle. He called me a long time ago to be an eagle and eagles in the, are symbolic for prophets. <clears throat> and they soar in the high places and they have vision. They have extraordinary vision. 
<clears throat> they stay close to the son, which is the son of God. They stay very intimate with God. And they hear what God has to say. When you walk in a prophetic anointing, you hear what God has to say. And today, you know, I when I was in South America, I had bought a, a bunch of a prophetic mantles for some prophets that are on prayer team with me. And we've been working together for like nine months now. And there's some things God has me share with him them about the prophetic and to raise them up to be prophets. And for some of them, I had brought these prophetic mantles. And so, um, and the Lord was saying to me this morning when I woke up, he said, I've been using you to raise up prophets. I've been using you to raise up prophets, people who will walk in the prophetic gifts and call of God. And sometimes I see, okay, so like angel, uh, eagles, they fly and mount up with wings of eagles in the scripture. And when I was going through Panama Canal, God had given me a word. He had given me Isaiah chapter 40. It's the very end where it says, and even young men grow weak and weary and youth grow faint. But those who wait upon the Lord will mount up their wing on wings of eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. So I'm in the front of this cruise ship as we're crossing the Panama Canal and God had given me that word. I was reading that in my scripture and I come out and there's like a hundred eagles flying overhead. Uh, they were um, not eagles. They were some sort of hawks. But to me, I knew God was saying that these, these are like sea, sea eagles, not seagulls, but sea eagles, that these eagles were soaring and mounting in high places. And the Lord was saying to me, I am mounting you up on wings of eagles and you will take flight. And what's funny is that when what eagles do is that they when there is a, a wind will come under them and lift them to a higher place, a higher place. So when we are mounting up with wings of eagles and struggles come, we go to a higher place. And that wind is the wind of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Oh, I just get the manifestation of the Holy Spirit all over me right now. I just get goosebumps all over my body. I'm like, like electricity. And I just know that the wind of the Holy Spirit will raise that eagle up to a higher place, a higher place. And the wind and the breath of the Holy Spirit will raise you to a higher place so that you just, okay, so let me give you another link. Okay, another link with the Lord, the Holy Spirit is telling me that, you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. This is one of the key verses in scripture that you can look to to see how God operates. That every time the enemy comes against you, what the Lord does is he elevates you above the struggle. He elevates you. He blows the breath of the Holy Spirit. And as you surrender to him in that situation and not try to manipulate it with your own hands and your own circumstances, God will ele use that situation to elevate you higher above that situation. And that's how you get, as an eagle, you get higher and higher and higher. I'm just telling you some deep, deep things of God that God has revealed to me about how to go to the high places with the Lord, how to dwell in his presence, how to have that spiritual power authority that will manifest in your life how to see in this prophetic how to how to speak in the prophetic how to manifest the power of god here on earth and it ha has to do with intimacy with the father intimacy with the father and when we have difficulties and circumstances they elevate us to a higher place and i have people who call me and say can you pray about the situation of course no problem definitely pray for you but it is really f an opportunity that difficult difficulty in their life, that person's life, is an opportunity for them to be elevated. For them to go to a higher place in the Lord and have victory over the work of the enemy in their life, the fan, life of their loved ones, in the life of their country, or wherever it is God has them interceding over. It is an opportunity for them to be elevated closer to God so that they have the power of God to manifest in their lives. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. One of the things that was on my spirit earlier was to teach you how to kick the devil in the butt. Okay? Satan cannot stand against the Lord. He is not God's equal. When you're robed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are wearing the mantle of Christ. A lot of people will ask Satan to leave. A lot of people will beg Satan to leave. A lot of people will command him to hell. These people do not have understanding of scripture. 
Satan has been given, according to scripture, even Jesus did not cast the demons into hell. He sent them to the pigs. He didn't send them to the abyss. Why? Because they have a season where they're allowed to roam the earth. Okay, so we don't have the power to overturn God's authority. What we do have the power. We have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loosen on earth is loosened in heaven. That's what Jesus said. We have the power to storm the gates of hell. When we were in South America, we had to literally go into a temple. It was a pyramid in, um, in Peru where they were sacrificing human beings and drinking their blood. This was in 100 to 600 AD. And we had to go in there and we have to bind up the strong man and the break the generational curses, take communion there, uh, ask for repentance of the sin of the generate forefathers and release a younger generation and build an altar there for them, for God. And um, that's storming the gates of hell for this next generation. And that's something God had to do for us. And, and it's funny because when we came back to the boat, that night we had flies all over the restaurant. I mean, somebody was complaining about it because it was in the food in the, on the boat. And the Holy Spirit was saying to me, you know, Satan is the Lord of flies. He's Beelzebub. And all these flies are people who have gone into that demonic realm and they've come back into the boat and they brought demons with them because they didn't know how to go into a spiritually uh, demonic place. So it's just, you know, when you see in the spiritual realm, you see this stuff and you're like, wow. Wow, I'm just blown away at it. So the man was going around zapping the flies. and But the point is, <clears throat> we are not to tremble at Satan. As believers, we are not to be afraid. We are to be like King David, who says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he shall defile the armies of the living God? The Lord who has given me victory over the bear and over the lion will give me victory over this Philistine. And today, I'm going to kick your butt. That's what he says. Today, I'm going to... Um, Cut off your head and give your carcass to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. King David wasn't talking very holy. He was talking about an uncircumcised Philistine. And you know what that means. He was talking about his private parts. He was just saying, you, you little wiener, you know, who are you to come against the Lord's people? I'm going to kick your butt today and I'm going to cut off your head and I'm going to give your body to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and animals are going to eat you. It's like when Elijah told Jezebel, he told Jezebel, he said, tomorrow you're going to be dog poop. He said, your dogs are going to eat you. And the next day she was pushed off the castle walls and the dogs ate her. And the next day the dogs were pooping her out. I'm sorry. I just want to get real with you. When there is an enemy to the Lord's people, God knows how to deal with that enemy. And it says, like it says in Ephesians 6, the enemy isn't flesh and blood. It's the demons that torment them. But when Jezebel had given in to such a demonic spirit of idolatry and led the Lord's people into idolatry, God's holy people were set apart for him, had been led into idolatry, God decided to kick her butt and destroy her and make her dog poop. I am sorry. That's the truth of Jezebel's end. She became dog poop. And I just want you to know that there are demonic strongholds in your life and in the life of your family members that God wants to kick and give you victory over. But you are not to go in with a fear of a spirit of fear or timidity. You are to go with that spirit of boldness and courage and the faith that King David had. That even if you have one rock, that one rock is going to go smack dab right in the middle of the giant's forehead. That Satan is going to be bound because you claim he is bound. You know, there are times where I've seen Lucifer in my bedroom and I've had to say, I bind you, Lucifer. Lucifer, get out. You don't belong in my house. I'm not your property. This is not your home and you are not welcome. I especially see him when I've done deep, deep spiritual warfare. Sometimes he comes at me in the middle of the night. I remember when we went to that temple in uh, South America that night when we were back in our room, my sister and I, in the middle of the night, there was just this dark, demonic spirit. And I just knew he had come uh, come after me. And I just had to, I woke up in the middle of the night. And I said, get out, get out. And usually I say that in the name of Jesus, get out. You don't have permission. And he leaves. That night, he didn't leave. And my sister and I took communion in the middle of the night, and he left. The communion did it. The blood of Jesus. There is no greater power than the blood of Jesus. 
There is no greater power than the blood of Jesus. There is no greater power than the blood of Jesus. You have to understand when we go in the demonic realm, we are covered in the blood of Jesus. This is why I take communion regularly because I know that when I'm going into a jail cell, when I'm going into dark places, when I'm going in the juvenile halls, when I'm going into the tem temple of the moon where they did sacrifices of human beings and drank their blood, that I need to be covered in the blood of Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice for the sin of all mankind. And it only had to happen once and we never have to do it again. And you know, when, when my sister and I had gone into this temple of Luna where they were doing these uh, blood sacrifices in Peru, you know, one of the things that the Lord showed me it happened in the year 100 to the year 600 and their civilization was destroyed in 700 by a huge flood a huge flood came the el nino and there's another um um i forget the humboldts from the uh, from the ocean they were like six miles from the ocean or even further and this way from the ocean the tsunami came and destroyed their civilization S destroyed their civilization does that sound familiar to me that sounds like the flood you know this happened in 100 AD so no this is not the flood of Noah but the point is that God destroyed the civilization that was making human sacrifices of human beings and drinking their blood and what's interesting is that it started happening in 100 AD to 600 AD and uh, 700 AD is when they were destroyed and you know what I what is so amazing to me is that in uh, it's 100 AD which is a hundred years or 70 years after Jesus died after the blood sacrifice of Jesus and isn't it like Satan to create a counterfeit a counterfeit this was a counterfeit this was a counterfeit of Satan to make blood sacrifices of human beings to mimic what Jesus did on the cross and you know what's amazing is that Jesus tells us to take communion in remembrance of him and we use wine or grape juice representing the crushed grape and the bread because he's the bread of life and we use these things and what satan was having these people do was to drink their blood just like jesus was saying do this in remembrance of me and the blood that i've sacrificed for you these demonic priests in peru were drinking blood and it was as represented to the gods as um sacrifice of human blood to um, and the priest represented the, the gods and he would drink the blood and it for, was for sins of the people. It was to appease the gods. And, you know, it was so intense, intense to be in that place. You could just, when I walked in there, I could feel creepies all over me. Just like I feel the Holy Spirit, the hair on my neck was standing because of the presence of demonic spirits in that place. And I just want you to know, that was, you know, when Jesus told Peter, you're going to storm the gates of hell and the gates of Hades cannot uh, stand against you. When we went into the temple of Luna, the temple of the moon, the moon temple, in Peru, we were storming the gates of Hades. We were storming the gates of hell to reclaim and repossess the next generation of children from those descendants so that they can be saved because they have generational curses over them. I'm just telling you, there are deep things in God, deep things in God that Christians do not not even understand. They think they can go to church and live in this matrix that we call the world and do their eight to five jobs and everything is going to be okay. And they just live in this... Um, mediocre compromising christianity and you know pew sitting christianity i appreciate serving in the church but god says you know jesus didn't say go serve in the church he didn't he told the disciples go to the ends of the earth jesus never told his disciples i want you to now go sit in church and serve in the church no he said told his disciples i want you to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth that means get out of your pews and go start new churches and then when you start a new church go on and start another new church that's the apostolic call of god is for us to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth and he earth and he says that if you do that i'm going to baptize you in the holy spirit and my signs wonders and miracles will follow you thank you father Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, praise you, Father. So let me pray over us right now, and then I got to let you guys go. Got some stuff 
I got to take care of. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just declare and decree your divine, supernatural power and authority on the earth, in us, that we would be people who are empowered with the presence of God and have the boldness to kick the devil out of our lives. And so to say to Satan, get out. You don't belong in my home. You don't belong in my life. You have no permission to be here. I'm God's property. I belong to the Lord. I'm his kid. And so to say, to kick the enemy out of our lives and to be robed in the righteousness of God, to be living in purity and holiness and to take back what the enemy has stolen. Lord, there are so many who are captive to the enemy, Lord God. There's so many that are sitting in captivity in the demonic realm and they've been taken captive by the enemy, whether it's drugs or alcohol or perversion or finances or whatever it is, brokenness, God, in their lives. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. We claim them back in the name of Jesus and we we pray for their salvation. <clears throat> And we command Satan, let go of them, Satan. You ha don't have them. They are the Lord's property and we are claiming them for the Lord in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over them and we forgive them of their sins and we ask that the Lord forgives them of their sins and that the Lord leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one lost sheep and he's going after that lost sheep right now in the name of Jesus and we declare and decree it and prophesy and speak to the winds in Jesus' name and I bind the spirit of revenge, retribution, retaliation and every transferring spirit that would come against us for praying and and interceding for the lost and for any spiritual warfare we do we crush the spirit of revenge retribution retaliation and every transferring spirit under the feet of jesus christ and we have victory in jesus name god bless you and we release the spirit of love we ask the holy spirit to go out and minister to the lost we release the holy spirit in whatever circumstances we have bound the enemy in jesus name that the fruits of the spirit would prosper in these people and in their lives in jesus name and we bind the spirit of revenge, retribution, retaliation, and every transferring spirit from coming against us and anyone or anything that comes against us in Jesus' name. God bless you all. This is Jane Nettie Wessel, Lady Jesus, signing out. See you all tomorrow at 1230. God bless. Bye.